Hey everybody, this is Minion Soldier and this is Ship Updates. Now, right off the bat, I gotta tell you that I've kinda run into a bit of a scheduling problem today. And so this episode is probably going to be, you know, a little late this evening. And it's there's great information that we got on our TV today, but at this point I'm gonna try to just kinda bang through it because um I've pretty much been awake for about 28 hours straight, so um, before these words start to melt together on the page, I'm going to kind of try to get through all of this. Now, of course, on ATV, we saw a whole bunch of new footage of the Drake Dragonfly flying around on a planet's surface. You know, just great, great stuff, and I really highly recommend, if you haven't seen ATV already, I'm going to put the link in the description below, if I remember, and... <laughs> You, you got to watch it. It was absolutely fantastic. And I mean, there are some shots where they're driving around with the Ursa as well on the planet surface and they're climbing up a hill and then you look up and you can see into space. And given all the footage that we've seen recently, I mean, you look up and you see into space, you might see like your friend's spaceship, you know, way up there in space, depending on the size of the ship. It's just, I mean, when you start to really grasp the scope and scale that it, that we're going to have hopefully before the end of the year it's just it's mind boggling and uh you know it, i i think in as much as it is like a vindication for CIG um it's also a vindication for all the backers who have uh you know kind of stuck through all all the ups and downs but anyways let's get right down to the facts now when they were talking about the Drake Dragonfly on RTV it, I mean, it's a lot of it was reiterated things that we already knew, things about the complexity of the model and how, but they were showing us how the model is progressing. And I should have some footage looping up here that you can see just some select stuff um, that I grabbed from YouTube off of ATV. So you can check that out, but obviously check out the episode. Totally worth watching. Um, but one of the things that they dropped in our TV relative to the Dragonfly was as a as a personal project now this isn't something that chris roberts has put into action but they've begun designing dragonfly type vehicles for other manufacturers now we had heard before from chris roberts that the dragonfly was the first foray into this you know into this arena and now we're finding out that the artists who are responsible for it um, their names escape me at this moment and, uh, but you know, they were talking about it on RTV and it's the same guys who are talking about it on ATV. They're not, they have been doing as a personal project. They've been working on these new versions of the Drake Dragonfly from different manufacturers and they're going to present, I guess, present it to Chris at some point in the future. So there may be more coming. So keep an eye out for that. Now, Beyond the Drake Dragonfly, they did touch on the Banu Merchantman. Now, I know that a few people have been going, oh, we got to find out about the Banu Merchantman, the Banu Merchantman. And we did get some information. Now, some of it is stuff that, you know, we already knew. Or if you've been watching the show, you know, like I've said this before, is that the Banu Merchantman is in a group of four ships. First off is the Carrick, the Reclaimer, the Orion, and the Banu Merchantman. All those ships are all big ships that are ready to go in, but there's still a little bit of work that needs to be done for each, like a second pass on the concept before they go into production. The Carrick is first in line. The Carrick is not in production yet. It's waiting for an artist. But the Banu Merchantman is the same thing. They're waiting for an artist so they can get a second pass because, remember, this is going to be the first foray into the Banu fleet. So in as much as the Cutlass kind of set the standard for Drake or the Hornet set the standard for Anvil, this is going to be what sets the standard and the look for the Banu, Mer for the Banu race and the Banu ships. So they really got to put in a lot of work into it. And now we've know, you know, we've known from the past that, you know, one of the big holdups has been trying to get the look, the feel of the Banu you know, it's also the thing that's holding the Prowler back right now is waiting for the Tavarin look and all that. But basically right now it is just waiting for an artist to give the concept a second pass to finish out the interiors 
and then to really get that thing rolling. So something to look forward to. I know it's not a lot. It's not a date. It's not a time frame, but it's in a holding pattern waiting for the artist and hopefully very, very soon if Squadron 42 clears the docket, you know, hopefully some really big things will happen with these other ships. Now, of course, I um, already touched on the Carrick. Once again, the Carrick is uh, they want to you know, they want to work with the interior a little bit more, um, get it more of like an anvil interior is one of the things that they were mentioning in RTV. But that ship is also, you know, that ship is first in line after the Caterpillar. Now the Caterpillar got a command module, you know, redo recently. So that has kind of slowed down. And we were hoping to see the Caterpillar sometime really soon. It was supposed to be the next hangar ready ship. And it looks like it's been pushed back. And it's probably that command module that did it. So no date yet on that. But once that's done, the Carrick is the next in line. Barring any unforeseen changes. Now, as for the ships that we've seen, the ships that we know about, that is it. But, 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 we also got information on the Polaris. And it seems that at one point in the summer, they thought they had the, the Polaris pretty much finished, done. Now, when I say finished and done, I don't mean finished, flyable, and ready to go. But what I mean is the concept. They figured they had it more or less finished. And apparently Chris Roberts went back and said, we want, we want some more shots of the interior. So they probably have to do some more interior mock-ups and get, you know, kind of really get the look of the ship. But, you know, up until now, all we knew is they kind of had a hull shape and, you know, a basic, you know, hull geometry for the ship. Now we find out that they had, they figured they had the concept all the way done, but, you know, they just need a few more interior shots for quote unquote promotional materials so chances are it is looking very, very strong now that the Polaris is going to be at CitizenCon in October. So just a little over a month away before we see the Polaris. Um, we have gotten no indications as to limited availability, but I'm going to roll the dice on that one and say, no, there's not going to be anything like that. I just cannot see it. The enthusiasm is, is too high. Um, Hopefully, you know, you know, I'm going to kind of go over some of my thoughts on the Polaris on the piracy show on Monday, but hopefully this is going to be a ship that really kind of sets this, you know, really kind of uh, meets a lot of people's expectations. But unfortunately, that is all I got for you this week. I know it's not a lot, but it's it has to do with a lot of really great ships that I know a lot of people are looking forward to. And uh, maybe I'll touch on the Banu Merchantman a little bit on Monday as well. Try to, you know, reiterate a whole bunch of points and kind of review its history a little bit. But we'll wait and see for Monday. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm going to bed. Thanks for watching. Quantum Travel Initiated.